Hello everyone, this is um, Berus speaking and this is our first session, the first pre-recording as part of the HVAC workshop which is about the practical fundamentals of heating, ventilation and air conditioning. This session is uh, about an introduction to HVAC systems and in this session I'm just going to talk about especially, especially about the fundamentals of thermodynamics. Okay, so basically when it comes to HV air conditioning systems, okay, so you have to talk about heat, right? You have to talk about cold, you have to talk about temperature. You have got a fluid that circulates in the system, all right? As the coolant, for example, right? So the flow of that fluid is important, something like a gas or fluid or something, that is important. But when it comes to this kind of discussions, for example, what is happening inside a heat exchanger or, for example, what is happening to the inlet and outlet of that or, uh, for example, things like this, uh, there are a number of thermodynamics parameters that you have to consider. Like what? Like temperature, of course. Like what? Like pressure, okay? Like density, for example. Things like this, okay? So we have to uh, specific weight or something, okay? So especially temperature and pressure. So we have to care about these things. So the in, in very basics, right, basically we, we need to know a lot about thermodynamics, the first law, the second law, the, um, let's say, the relation between mass and energy and work. And at the same time, we need to understand the, the process of heat transfer, okay? The process of, uh, let's say, uh, vaporization, the process of uh, condensation, things like this, okay? So this is the subject of this course. So as I said, we have got some properties, some parameters, some variables in thermodynamics, in very fundamental point of view, right? Like what? Like force, mass, weight, density, a specific gravity, a specific volume, pressure, work and energy, as I said, there are a number of parameters of, uh, let's say, the substance we are talking about, of the body, as we call it, or something, right? Especially weight or mass, especially force, volume, or uh, temperature, pressure, things like this, okay? Energy. So, in here, especially, we are going to focus on the relationship between temperature and pressure. So, you know, you have got a pipe, say, all right? So, you increase the pressure. How? By, for example, making the pipe thinner, making the pipe, uh, let's say, smaller or something like that, okay? By doing that, you not only increase the pressure, or sometimes you are using valve or something like that, but also by adding to the pressure, you are adding to the temperature, okay? So you are decreasing the volume, you are increasing the pressure, you are increasing the temperature. But it all depends on what we call the resistivity of that metal or substance or whatever. It has to do with the current flow. So we just scale the temperature and pressure or something, but there are some control parameters in between by changing the type of the pipe, by changing the thickness of the pipe, by changing the size of the pipe, by putting a number of control valves or something, okay? So we are able to bring things under control. So we are going to use this information, for example, in building up a, um, uh, let's say, a thermal power station, just as an example or, for example, any factory that has to do with, uh, let's say, concentration or, uh, let's say, extraction of ores or something like that in mining, in oil and gas. So we have got a lot of, uh, basically, applications for that. As I said, we have got some very basic, some very fundamentals, like the first law of thermodynamics and the second law of thermodynamics that I'm going to talk about uh, shortly. And at the end, we are going to talk about the thermodynamic systems and processes, just to make sure that we understand the process and we are on the same line, okay? So basically, when you think about the thermodynamic systems, in very general, we can divide them into 
three, uh, let's say, groups of isolated, closed, and open systems. Again, I can give you some, uh, let's say, examples of power industry, for example, right, or mechanical uh, engineering or something. So let's assume you have got, say, um, a gas power station, and next to that gas power station, you have got a, a thermal power station with boiler or something like that. Okay, so sometimes you are you are, you are using these <coughs> units uh, as kind of isolated, so individually you are going to work on that. You are not going to make any interrelation between these two, all right? So you are using, a, a, let's say, a, a, an open system, okay, whose input and output may not be so uh, somehow related to each other, but somehow you just make it a closed system. Okay, so you just connect, for example, the output of something. Let's say the uh, let's say the exhaust gases or something that are very very still hot uh, coming out of uh, let's say that gas power station and conduct them towards the let's say the boiler of the second power station. So that can close the system. That can have a feedback to the second system. That can provide uh, let's say higher efficiency in that closed system. But <coughs> the, and the important thing is that we have to. Uh, let's say uh, closely monitor how, for example, fluid uh, changes into gas, changes into steam, or something like that, and then again condenses back to fluid or something. So this is the process. So we have to have very good control of the pressure, of the temperature, by using appropriate, for example, valves and appropriate pipe sizes at appropriate locations. So this is the key to success. Well, in order to do that, we need to be aware of some, uh, let's say, states and, uh, uh, let's say, conditions uh, which have to do with thermodynamics, like, for example, thermodynamic surroundings, thermodynamic equilibrium, for example, you want to bring the system into the state of equilibrium so that you have got a unified system, for example, at one cross-section with equal, let's say, temperatures or pressure or something. You need to understand a lot about control volume, okay, and also the steady state uh, of that gas or fluid that you have got in there. So again, in terms of the processes, we have got a number of processes. So we have got thermodynamic process, we have got cyclic process. Again, this is what can happen in a transformer. This is what can happen in a generator, for example. This can what can that this is what can happen happen in a compressor, for example. Sometimes the process is reversible. Sometimes the process is irreversible because we have got some limitations in temperature, in pressure, or something. And as you can see, we have got other processes in here. So we need to have good information at very, uh, just to start with at basic levels regarding the definitions of these kind of things so we can get our hands on it. <coughs>